Welcome to this video in which we will look at a property of discrete time signals, specifically uh, periodicity, whether signals are periodic. And uh, we'll do this by going through a whole lot of examples. You can see the signals that we're going to go through listed in yellow here. I also have the definition of periodic, and the idea behind this definition is a signal is periodic if it repeats itself every cap and samples. Okay, so um, I guess we'll just start going through the uh, examples and see if we can uh, clarify the definition while we're working the examples. So if we look at our first signal, x of n is 2 when n is even and minus 2 when n is odd. So I've graphed this signal here. You can see, I'm sorry, did I say x of n is 2? It should be x of n is 3 when n is even. So you can see that this signal is 3 when I have an even value of n, say 0, 2, 4, etc., and minus 2 when n is odd. One of the things that's really helpful in determining whether or not a signal is periodic is to graph it, because if you graph it, um, your eye is actually very good at dis discerning patterns and such. So if I look at this, um, it does look to me like the signal repeats itself every two samples it goes high, low, and then it starts over again, high, low, and so on. So um, I would guess here that this is a periodic signal and that its period is 2. So to check this I can say um, xn plus 2 is equal to what? Well. Let's see, if n is even and I add 2 to it, then n will still be even. So if, uh, uh, if x of n is 3, because n is even, then x of n plus 2 will also be 3. And similarly, if uh, n is odd, when I add 2 to it, n plus 2 is odd. And so if x of n is minus 2, then x of n plus 2 will also be minus 2. So in this particular case, we can say that x of n is equal to x of n plus 2, which tells us then that the signal is periodic with period 2. So that's not so bad, is it? Okay, let's look at our next signal. Okay, first off, is this signal periodic? Well, if you look at the graph which I have here, it certainly doesn't look like it. Um, it's not clear that this signal repeats itself ever. Uh, as I start at zero and as n gets bigger, it just keeps growing and growing uh, without bound. So in this case, we can say that this is not periodic. Because it doesn't repeat itself. OK. Let's look at this one. Is this signal periodic? Uh, well, the fact that I have a sign, and signs are in general periodic, uh, gives me hope that this would indeed be periodic, although uh, there are cases with discrete time signals where you can come up with something that looks like it ought to be periodic but isn't. Um, in this case, though, if I look at my graph, I start at zero, go up, go down, and come back to zero, and it looks like this pattern just repeats itself over and over. So if I count here, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I have 12 samples uh, before the signal starts over again. So it looks to me like n is equal to 12. Now, it's useful to be able to look at things and say, yeah, this looks like this is what it should be, but also we need to make sure we can, we can show this analytically. So if we say x of n plus 12 and work this out, if we can discover that x of n plus 12, if it actually is equal to x of n, then we will have shown mathematically that the signal is periodic with period 12. Okay, well let's um, actually write down what x of n plus 12 would be. It's sine of pi over 6 times n plus 12. And so I can multiply through by pi over 6. This will become sine of pi over 6n plus 
12 times pi over 6. And uh, we immediately see that this term here is just 2 pi. And because a sine is periodic with period 2 pi, I can add 2 pi to its argument here and not change the value of the sine. So in this case, uh, this, uh, this guy here is equal to sine pi over 6n. So in this case, which is x of n, which indeed means that this is periodic. Okay, so a lot of times, especially when we are deriving discrete time signals from a corresponding continuous time signal that's periodic, a lot of times we use the fact that the continuous time signal is periodic to show that the discrete time signal is also periodic. And since sine is periodic with period 2 pi, um, if I can have this uh, frequency out here times a period equal to 2 pi, or some multiple of 2 pi, then I can show that the discrete time signal is periodic. Okay, so far so good. Hope you're having as much fun as I am. Okay, let's look at this signal. Is this signal periodic? And you look at it and you say, well, it certainly isn't as nice and tidy as the last one. But if you start looking at it carefully, you see that you have a value of 1 here. You go out 18 samples, you have another value of 1. You go out um, another 18 samples and you've got a value of 1. And in between the 18 samples, these patterns look pretty much the same. So it looks to me like I would say, yes, this probably is periodic. And I'm guessing that it's periodic with period 18. So we'll write that as a question to see if we're actually correct here. And so um, the thing we need to show then is if x of n plus cap n, where n cap n is 18, is equal to x of n. Okay. Well, again, uh, cosine of 5 pi over 9 times little n plus 18. I can multiply this out, and I get um, cosine of 5 pi over 9n plus 5 pi over 9 times 18. And you can see that this guy cancel here. I've got 2. So um, this term becomes 10 pi. Well, uh, any time I add an integer multiple of 2 pi to my argument here, because the cosine is periodic with period 2 pi, um, I get the same thing. So in fact, I can say that this whole thing is equal to cosine 5 pi over 9n. Okay. So it is periodic with period n equal to 18. Now, one thing that you often ask is whether or not this is the fundamental period. And this is a term that I haven't uh, used yet in this video. Fundamental. And the idea is that the fundamental period is the smallest value of n for which this expression holds. And you may be thinking, well, that's kind of dumb. But if you look at the plot I have here, if I were to set n equal to 36, so if I were to go from this sample all the way to the sample right before this guy here, that's a sequence of 36 samples. And it turns out that this sequence of 36 samples repeats over and over again, too. So not only is my signal periodic with period 18, it's periodic also with period 36. But when we talk about the fundamental period, we're talking about the smallest period, uh, the smallest value here for which the thing is periodic. And so you might be tempted to try to find a smaller value than 18 um, where that gives us this repeating behavior. Uh, but as best I can tell, even just by looking at the graph, there is no smaller value than 18. 
So n equals 18 is the fundamental period of this of this sinusoid. Okay, well, hopefully you're having fun. Hopefully you're having as much fun as I am. Okay, so the next one is um, kind of interesting. So I have xn is cosine pi over 10 n squared. Now, if I were to look at a similar continuous time system, say x or signal x of t is equal to cosine pi over 10 t squared. And if I were to graph this, this would clearly not be periodic. Uh, it basically has a graph that starts out like this, and then as t gets larger, it wiggles and faster and faster and faster and faster, which is definitely not periodic. I don't have anything that repeats itself. So my initial inclination here was to say, well, I've got this n squared term. That means this thing's not going to be periodic. But then I graphed it and I got a graph that looks like this. And you'll notice that there's a pattern that seems to repeat itself every 10 samples, which again, uh, I probably shouldn't confess this, but this was a real surprise to me. I was kind of taken aback by this. And so my question is, is this periodic with a period of 10? Well, let's see. Uh, we want to say the cosine of pi over 10 times n plus 10 squared. Again, this is uh, x of n plus n, where we're checking to see if the period is 10. I can write this, uh, this n plus 10 squared. Uh, this uh, expands to n squared plus 20n plus 100. Okay, and so if I multiply each of these terms by pi over 10, I'll have uh, pi over 10n squared, and then I'll have pi over 10 times 20, which is 2 pi times n plus pi over 10 times 100, which is 10 pi. Okay, and I still have the cosine around here. Okay, now the cosine, again, as we've talked about several times already, is periodic with period 2 pi. So you can see here that I'm adding an integer number of uh, 2 pi's to my argument here, and I'm adding another 5 2 pi's here. So I'm adding an integer number of 2 pi's, which means because cosine is periodic with 2 pi, that this guy is equal to cosine pi over 10 n squared, which is what we started with. That's what x of n is. So it turns out that this signal, contrary to everything that I thought was obvious, is periodic with period 10. This is something that, this is one of those strange things that happens with discrete time signals that uh, makes the intuition that you've built with continuous time signals be a little shaky. Okay, well, we're almost done. One last case. Is this signal periodic? And if I look at it, I can see that I have, um, if I look at the graph here, I've got something that appears to uh, recur or repeat itself every 24 samples. So I guess my first question is, whoops, why on earth is this not drawing properly, is n equal to 24. And um, so if I take uh, x of n plus 24 and plug in n plus 24 here and here, uh, what you'll find is um, I'll have pi over 3n, and then I get, I get 24 times pi over 3, which gives me 8 pi. So that 8 pi is a multiple of 2 pi, so that goes away. And here I'll have pi over 4n plus 6 pi. Again, the 6 pi is a multiple 
of 2 pi and it goes away. So it turns out that this one is periodic with fundamental period 24. Again, you can see from the graph that it doesn't look like it's um, repeating any time before that. So um, there you have it. Uh, I'm pretty much out of time, but uh, this shows you uh, what a discrete time uh, periodic signal is, and it also shows you how to go about determining whether or not a particular discrete time signal is periodic. Uh, you try to figure out what the fundamental period is, and uh, you can check to see that you're right, uh, that uh, a cap n is actually a period by plugging it in uh, to choosing or looking for x of n plus cap n and seeing if you can show that that's equal to x of n. So hopefully this was helpful and thanks for watching.